Goldberg opened the view today on a Whoopi Goldberg opened the view today on a very serious note, continuing to apologize in the wake of her controversial comments about race and the Holocaust. Amber Cagliano reports. My words upset so many people, which was never my intention. Whoopi Goldberg apologizing on the view today for saying the Holocaust was not about race. I regret my comments, as I said, and I stand corrected. I also stand with the Jewish people, as they know and y'all know. Whoopi caused an uproar Monday discussing a Tennessee school district's controversial ban on Mao's, the Pulitzer Prize winning graphic novel about the Holocaust. The Holocaust isn't about race. Her co-host seemed taken aback. No, it's well, not about maybe race. Maybe it's, 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 no, it's, it's about a different it's, race. But it's, it's not about race. It's not about well, race. What is it about? Because you, it's about man's inhumanity to man. She also characterized the slaughter of six million Jews like this. This is why people doing it to white people. Yeah. The response was swift, a blizzard of social media posts telling her, yes, it was about race and headlines like this. Whoopi was already scheduled to appear on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert to promote her role on the new season of Star Trek. So she seized the opportunity and explained what she meant. Would you care to uh, follow up? Clarify what you said this morning. Most of the Nazis were white people, and most of the people they were attacking were white people. So to me, I'm thinking, how can you, how can you say it's about race if you are fighting each other? Overnight, she tweeted her apologies. I said the Holocaust is not about race. I stand corrected. I'm sorry for the hurt I have caused. But yesterday uh, on our show, I misspoke. References to the Holocaust come at a sensitive time. Last Thursday was International Holocaust. Holocaust Remembrance Day. Acts of anti-Semitism are making headlines. Saturday, a snowplow driver appears to deliberately slosh snow over two Orthodox Jewish men walking to synagogue in Lakewood, New Jersey. Then he laughs. The driver has been suspended by his company. Police are investigating. Good morning, YouTube family. I want to uh, share something with you very briefly about this. Just a couple of highlights and key points I want to piggyback on. But if you're going to look at anything pertaining to this Whoopi Goldberg case and what she said when it comes down to the Holocaust, you want to look up We Woke Now channel, Pastor Kelly. He did an excellent job. He gave an excellent commentary about this and a breakdown. I mean, he broke it down until it could not be broke down anymore. He did a very excellent job. And I'm uh, looking for a scripture here. Give a second. But what I heard here, for all of you people that are soft, everything is uh, soft, everything is offensive, there's nothing you can say, you can't say anything at all, because people get very offended about anything that you say concerning the Holocaust. First of all, I did not see anything that she said was wrong or demeaning she was not demeaning the lives that were lost during the Holocaust, which there are various books out there. And uh, even Pastor Kelly deals with it. Was it one million Jews that were killed? Was it six million Jews, which I hear that number now, six million Jews that were killed? Or was there 10 million Jews that were killed? You know, how many Jews were killed? Also, you had other different ethnicities. Blacks were killed in the Holocaust because according to Hitler, Hitler did not want uh, blacks mixing with the Germans. He wanted the Germans to stay 100%. He did not want the interbreeding to go on and take place even with them. So, you know, other different races were killed along with the Jews as we know them today. 
But what Whoopi Goldberg said that this was not about race, I can't see where that was offensive because she came back and she said that this was about man against man and humanity. This is about the inhumane things that one man did to another man. This was white on white crime right here. But basically when she said that she was censored and made to apologize for that remark that she said. So, you know, when we talk about slavery and then they say last week or so, they just had the day of, uh, 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 remembrance for the Holocaust. When do blacks have a day of remembrance for the 400 years of slavery that we have been enslaved over in this country? We are in our land of exile. We are in our land of captivity. But as you see, there is no day of remembrance for slavery. And I talk to people, I talk to a guy, you know, and I'm not saying anything against the Holocaust. The Holocaust was very it was it was an atrocious act. It took lives, innocent lives. It was uh very bad, very bad. My heart goes out to all of those who did lose their lives in the Holocaust. But on the same token, you also have slavery, which a lot of people were lynched, murdered, hung, killed, set on fire, died very gruesome deaths. Even look at Emmett Till. That's the way some of our people were killed back in the 400 years of slavery and the inhumane ways that they were treated. And then when you talk about King Leopold, King Leopold, who happens to be the uh, king that went over into the Congos and he killed 10 million blacks over there. But you won't find that out in U.S. history or school or anything else like that. That's something you'll have to pick up and learn on your own. But that day is not celebrated. It's not talked about. There's no day of remembrance for King Leopold taking over the Congos and killing all of those uh, blacks up over there. Ten million of them. Now, like I said before, the Holocaust numbers has ranged from the one million mark to the 6 million mark, to the 10 million mark. All you got to do is Google and go on the internet and you will see the various uh, timelines where they say 1 million, 6 million Jews to 10 million Jews were killed. How many of them was actually killed? And what it really all boils down to this month being Black History Month, you know, the channel that Whoopi Goldberg is on is called The View. The View is where you give your point of view. I think that's why it's called the view because you're giving your point of view. So anyhow, she gives her point of view and she said that this was not about race against race because it wasn't. Hitler being German, you know, even fair-skinned white against the other whites, this was not about race. I see her point that she made. It was about the inhumanity of man, man not being human towards another mankind. So when you make remarks like this, you're censored and banned because everything basically is owned by the Jews. The Jews own everything from your pizza huts to your Burger Kings, to your restaurants, your food places, to your Sony music, to your entertainment. They are Google, your Facebooks. Uh, they are your Zionists. They own everything. They run the newspapers. You only get your news based off of what they want you to know over here because even your TV media, the newspapers are all ran by the Jews. And if you say anything against the Jewish people or the Holocaust or anything that took place, then you will be censored and banned. Now, I'm going to note again, there is nothing I am making light of the Holocaust and those people that suffered a great, terrible tragedy and death. But at in the same light and token, I am saying slavery, we are told, we are told as a people, forget your past. 
quit looking in the rearview mirror. Look for it now. But there's a national day of remembrance for the Holocaust. But as black people that the United States so call us, where we don't even know our country of origin because they just define us by black, which we are, which we are not black, but a brown skinned people. We are told not to remember what the United States of America did to our people, but forget it. Get past it. Get, let Put that stuff behind you. Quit looking in the rearview mirror. Go forward now. You have more economical advances than we ever had in life before. Oh, yeah? That's because your grandpappies and your grandmothers had all the money because Martin Luther King expressed it best that during that time, the government was giving grants and loans and farms to the Europeans, to the white people, and he was the government wasn't doing anything for blacks. We were being told to pull our own selves up by our own bootstraps while the government assisted the white race and gave them all kind of money. That is why now all of these banks, Chase Bank, there are many banks and uh, different businesses that have uh, uh, gained a whole lot off of the back of slavery that are in advancement today. They made their money on the backs of slaves from banks to businesses to food industries, you name it. They all got their start because of slavery. And like I said, you really just got to go back and study your history because everything you've been taught in school is a lie. Whoever conquers history tells their side of the story. So everything with Christopher Columbus discovering America, killing the Indians and all that kind of stuff, you got to go back and go past all of that history. They don't want you to know that we blacks are kings. They do not want you to know that blacks ruled the world and that whites came from blacks that we are the original man, we are the original creation of the earth. They don't want you to know any of that at all. When you go back and study history, uh, Pastor Kelly gave a very good example on the National Geographic channel uh, about Adam. Where did life and origin all begin over in Africa with the first man, the recreation of Adam? And get a look at that video. Uh, go to Pastor Kelly's We Woke Now. And he has the National Geographic channel on there where he explained and he talked about that the first man, Adam, was a black man. And he talks about the genes and everything else like that, tying us back to the Limba tribes and over in Africa where the Garden of Eden was. So all life has its origin from us. See, everything's just been stolen from us as a people. You know, the, the white man, the European race, they've stolen everything for years and tried to make it seem like it was theirs. They stole our inventions when we were in slavery and they patented them after themselves. They stole all, the, all of our ideas. They know we were first. They know that they came from us and they're trying to suppress authority over us because somebody has to be in the rule. Just like Abraham Lincoln says that he doesn't want the black man to be in rule, but somebody has to have power. And I am one that has favor that the white race has the power. So at this struggle in life and over here in the United States of America has always been about nothing but power and struggle and superiority and white superiority. Who's better? Who has the most? You know, don't you ever compare black the black wealth gap to the white wealth gap because yes it is very uh, uh disheartening when you look at those numbers when you were giving a, a mile run before we were the gun went off you took off down the field you ran you had a 10 minute start then we had to catch up that's how the wealth economic gap was. You were given everything by your government, subsidiaries, loans, grants, everything to help you out. But when it came down to us, we were not given anything at all. We worked for everything we had and were told to pull our own selves up by our own bootstrap. Okay, and I'm going to be ending this video on this note right here. The Bible says in the book of Revelations, chapter 2, verse 8, and unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. 
I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. The Christian church will never teach this scripture, but I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. We know who the true children of Israel are of the Bible. We know that those people living in Israel right now, they are Ashkenazis. They are from Russia, Germany, or Germany, Russia. They're from that region, that area. They are not the descendants of the Bible. They are not the true Jews of the Bible, if you want to use that terminology, Jews. But they are not the Israelites that the scriptures speak of. And God says that he is going to make them, those Jews, come and bow down and worship at the feet of his people. He knows that. So the whole world right now is coming into acknowledgement of who we are as the true people of God. Everyone's waking up, waking up. There is a great awakening taking place right now. That's why many of you are coming out of Christianity, coming out of false religion and church because church has done nothing but preach about tithes, offering, prosperity and money for years. And you haven't developed any knowledge or education on who you are as a people. So I said all that to say this. The Bible says in Daniel in the last days that knowledge shall be increased and people shall run to and fro. God is increasing his people's knowledge to where we know who we are. We are the descendants of Shem. We are the true Hebrew people. We are the true Hebraic people that the Bible speaks of. And God is going to make those who say they are Jews and are not, but of the synagogue of Satan, he is going to make them bow down at our feet and worship us and know that we are the ones that he has loved. This race of people, this brown-skinned, this dark race of people that have been ostracized, that which have been called names and demeaned and looked upon as poverty-stricken, uh, uh, health-stricken, all kind of sickness, no kind of common sense. When it comes down to finances or anything else like that, when it all boils down to it, God is going to let you know that these are the true chosen people of the earth that I have chosen for myself. I have taken the lowly base things of the world and I have making them to be prized possessions as the apple of my eye. All right, brothers and sisters, that's all I wanted to share with you real quick about Whoopi Goldberg having to be apologizing just like Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon had to apologize before because he came out with the knowledge of who he is and who we are as a people. Whoopi Goldberg acknowledges who she is. She knows her true Jewish roots or Hebrew roots at, at, that, or what kind of person she is. But you see, you're not going to get around the table of white women and think you fit in just because you're on that group. So they had to pull a rug from underneath her feet and let her know this Black History Month. Oh, no, sister, don't go there. Just because you're sitting at this table with white women, this does, make, this does not make you part of this group at all. So until you come back with an apology and apologize to these people, you may not come back at all. So that's all something that's enlightening and eye awakening. Just something for you to take note of. There was nothing she said wrong with that comment and even take a look at that book that she read that's called Mouse. That's describing the Holocaust and what went on and what took place. All right, brothers and sisters. Shalom.